everyone, my name is Charlene, and I'm here with three fellow teen ambassadors. We have Marisol, Brayden, and Zoe, and we're just going to open up a casual conversation, and we're just going to touch on how we have personally experienced how big tobacco has impacted our lives individually. So just to hop right in, I personally, I get really passionate about tobacco prevention in terms of marketing tactics. So that's something that seems like really personable to me, specifically just watching the evolution of tobacco products and seeing how they have purposely made tobacco products to become convenient for youth and just all the different marketing tactics and like commercials and how they incorporate in our TV shows and just all of those type of things really like spark mm -hmm. that kind of passion in me and what has really like empowered me to like do advocacy work. So I think that's the most prevalent thing like in my personal life that impacts me specifically about like big tobacco and stuff like that I think I've what you're saying makes a lot of sense like it I've always noticed that people don't especially kids don't seem to understand the level at which big tobacco companies do that like thinking about it hearing people talk about it, it makes me so mad like I get so angry that these companies are able to do that and it feels as like these the teenagers do not understand that or they're not mad about it like there's just no they don't know that that's what they're oh, doing and is. it's like talking to people about that makes a lot of sense like people should know that that's what these companies are doing because it's it's despicable and it's really sad that people don't know about it right and especially with like the evolution like you said Charlene I've really started to notice that it's not just teenagers anymore these marketing tactics are going to kids who are even younger and younger I remember at one summit a little girl came up to me and she was 11 she was 11 years old and she said that she had friends around her who were peer pressuring her and that like I've worked with kids before and that makes me so sad to see because I know that they're really learning and developing in this world and those are young minds and they're very impressionable yeah but it's definitely like that's all intentional so that's why mm -hmm. we as youth are targeted because our minds are still developing mm -hmm. and they target us because we're so susceptible right. to these tactics and starting with us like that they're creating lifelong customers so like it's just starting at a young age and just building that addiction and just building that Mm -hmm. kind of r rapport almost with youth. So it definitely is saddening to see. When you see the marketing with the tobacco industry and everything, it's not even only the marketing. I mean, like you just said, as they start vaping when they're younger, it comes to a point of word of mouth. I mean, mm -hmm. I have somebody that's close to me. He's he's old. <laughs> he's older. And, well, some of his friends, I mean, they vaped before. And it's something that they enjoy to do, which, you know, they're older, I mean nobody's gonna really tell him anything. And so one day they told, they told him, like here, like, you know, try this. I mean, you know, just try it. And then he's picked it up as sort of a habit now. And then one day I genuinely asked him, I was like, why? And he was like, oh, well, so-and-so got me hooked on it. Like, oh, uh, like he was livid about it. You can tell that he was like deeply mad, but at the same time, there's nothing I could really do because this person to me is somebody that I look up to and he has a lot of authority over me. Mm -hmm. And so who am I to go tell him, hey, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be doing this. I mean, who am I to tell him what he should and shouldn't be doing? I don't know, you just see how vaping, even at an older age, it stays and peer pressure is something that also stays. And so I think developing the skills to be able to say no or to have your own to be your own person and have your own experiences and thoughts without others telling you what to do, I think that's a really important skill that you should develop as you're younger. Because you see now how in schools and everything, if, you, if you're in your high school and let's say you go to a restroom or something, you see how normal it is mm -hmm. for people to vape. And it's been really normalized at this point. And yeah. I don't know. Have y'all seen things like that in y'all's school? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, especially for kids who have parents or older siblings that do it. Like, they get to a point where it doesn't, nothing you say to those people telling them how bad it is, you're not, you're going to have a really hard time convincing them that it's bad because everyone around them is doing it. It's something that is accepted. It's just, it's what you do. It's a part of normal life and having it's really hard to get somebody who lives in that to break away from that they don't see that they're not 
they're not going to see that. And nobody who really cares about them is going to tell them that they need to stop because they're all doing it too. And it's yeah. just this really awful cycle. Yeah. yeah. And then like essentially you're saying peer pressure can come in different forms, right? So mm-hmm. of course like having those that ability to say no is one thing because peer pressure can look like somebody almost like pressuring you mm-hmm. into it. Like, come on, like, it's cool. Like, we all do it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. So that's a form. And then there's like another form of just pressure, I guess, in general, of just what you do internally. So just seeing like, what's normal, what's accepted, what's looked at as cool. And it's not necessarily like a friend or someone like mm-hmm. pressuring it on you. But it's just natural. It's a natural part of growing up. And it's we all want to mm-hmm. be accepted and you know so that's really interesting to hear you know how pressure can look in Mm -hmm. different forms and ways especially especially what you're saying Charlene when it comes to it it doesn't have to be somebody being there saying hey try this I mean I've seen it firsthand how um there's somebody that's younger than me and I know him through another friend it's his younger brother and well he just kind of sits in the restroom sometimes during passing periods to go to the next class and there's a lot of people that vape in there And the thing with that is, even if you're thinking, I mean, I'm just sitting here, it's not like I'm actually vaping, it's not only is the secondhand smoke getting to you, but also the thought in your mind, how normal it is, and like, oh, well, everybody else is doing it, you know, maybe it's not that bad. Because if you're just in that environment constantly, you might think it's something that's okay to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, that exposure really opens up people to the option of vaping. Um, Personally, at my school, I know that vaping is kind of taken up as a habit when someone's struggling mentally, um, whether it be with anxiety or stress. And then when they start to do it because they think it's going to help them out in the short term, you know, with kind of that myth that if you start vaping, you're going to be able to quit and it's just going to be a one-time thing, well, then addiction gets you. And then you're addicted to nicotine or tobacco and you start to justify using it. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, that they're better off vaping Mm -hmm. or they're better off smoking um, because they're anxious or hyperactive people and it just makes them feel calmer or more, I guess, compatible with the world around them. And that just kind of Mm -hmm. just reinforces that addiction and doesn't really focus on the real source at hand of maybe where the stress is coming from or where the other mental health issues are coming from. No, that's actually a really great point because that is a huge misconception because a lot of youth do believe that they can rely on these products to resolve those feelings of stress, but they're really just making it worse. And that's why what we're doing here and all of this is so important, raising awareness about these things, making sure that people understand what these products really are. Big tobacco is always spreading lies, and it's really hard for people to make real informed decisions, good decisions for their health, if they don't know all the facts. And so that's why what we do is really important, and we get to, I'm really glad that we all get to be a big part of that. Yeah, having having the opportunity to be a teen ambassador has really taught me everything I need to know about vapes. And honestly, if I wasn't able to learn all this, I'm not sure where I would be right now, because the community... The community that I'm in and the people that I hang around with, they all vape and they all smoke. It's, like I said, it's really normalized where I'm from. And even some of my closest friends, they vape, which is something that I don't look down on them for. But I don't know where I would be without this organization. And I feel that the reason that I'm so happy and I'm, I'm safe from all of this is because I'm so educated on everything that Say What taught me. And, you know, I think you also touched on this, Brayden, but it's not just the education. It's the fact that Say What in and of itself is a community. Even though we say it is statewide, we come together, we work together, and we support one another as a program, but also as peers and as friends and as people who just want to see the best for one another. And so just having that community is really beautiful to see in partnership with the education. And I think it's really wonderful for our future as a generation. No, support is a huge part of everything that we do. And not only of our advocacy journey, but just us as youth and how we view these products and that decision making and how that looks. Because we have all experienced many different varieties of how it's impacted our communities, our schools, our families. And just like you touched on just a second ago, our mental health. And luckily, actually up next, we are going to be joined by 
Leanne Fole, and she is actually a licensed clinical social worker, and she's an adolescent therapist. And she's going to speak firsthand on her experience as an adolescent therapist on how big tobacco and these products have impacted adolescent youth and their mental health. 